P is needed early on in the year, K is needed later on in the year. The P and K is needed for solid ground, especially the K. So that's why slurry fits. So you'd like to have, try where you, especially are low index, you'd like to get some of your phosphorus, about half, out by early May. So if the weather comes right in March, after Patrick's Day, you take that opportunity. Sometimes it might be April, sometimes it'll be later. Hello and welcome to The Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Regan and on this week's episode, with a difficult spring leading to challenging grazing conditions, I'm joined by Chagas Grass Tail Manager John Maher to discuss top tips in relation to grassland management this spring. John, you're very welcome. What are the current soil temperatures and grass growth across the country? Grass growth is actually close to normal, Catherine, to be honest. I know the weather has been challenging, but it has been reasonably mild um, at the same time. There are going to be pockets where, where we will get colder spells of, of weather. I don't deny that, that might lower temperatures, but they will be short-lived. Every day that goes on now, we get longer day lengths and uh, greater grass growth. Um, grass growth in the latter half of February actually has been fairly close to normal. Um, so there's plenty of grass out there now, Katrin. I admit that the soil temperatures, you know, we want six degrees for growth and have varied from six degrees uh, at times or a little bit less, or up to 10 degrees. There's been a, uh, you know, I know, as I said, February has been wet, but growth hasn't been hindered. There is lots of grass out there. We know that from from the farms we walk. We know that from the pasture-based measurements that are done every week. Um, we know from the grass growth models done as well that, um, you know, that uh, there's plenty of grass there. Now, the challenge, of course, is to get out and utilise it, which I suppose this is the real focus of the call, I suppose, Catherine, yeah? Most definitely in, on farms where grazing has been delayed and in some cases there's very little grazing taking place to date this year so far. Mm. What are the key steps to get stock to grass in the coming weeks? Well, the, the first thing is the, the mindset of the, the farmer now, really, to be honest. Um, I accept the weather has been challenging. You would expect things will change. The benefits of going to grass for the animals are, are big. There's improved animal performance. In some places, silage supplies are tight, so getting animals out helps here. Uh, grass is substantially cheaper than um, ration or silage so there's big economic benefits as well the principle revolves around that the animal feeds itself and spreads its own slurry in some places there's challenges with, with slurry and tanks as well so the benefits are there to be seen I admit that the challenge is getting going right so the way to get going then is to start small and try and try and work with with what you have so you know lighter animals are easy to get out like the wanelings um you know or um store animals you, you start there um you try to pick the paddocks that have the kind of you know set up for for grazing really as such to start with because because you're working in you know uh, at the start and marginal conditions at times uh, the best places to go are the are paddocks with kind of lower cover of grass because if if it doesn't go overly well on the first few days at least if they leave the grass behind the quality is held um, right through march and into april the problem if you go out into the wrong grass which is you know grass that's huge covers and maybe uh, carried over from last autumn. The animals are not conditioned to, to graze, they're not trained to graze. So you start with lighter covers of grass, get them going. Um, sometimes the weather can be challenging. You have to kind of get on and get off and keep moving. You have to pick the right paddock. Like, you know, square paddocks work best. Um, long, narrow strips are, are kind of disastrous because the animals just keep walking up and down. So, you know, low covers of grass, square in nature, probably sheltered, probably on the drier side of the farm. Um, which leads to the next point, Catherine, that you always remind me of. You have to walk the farm to know where this is, right? Okay. And that the farmer kind of has a flexible and, and um, attitude to doing this in that we work with the conditions. I accept if things are too wet, they're too wet. But where we can get started, you start small, start with the lighter animals, get going, and then you just keep creeping away, keep keep, keep creeping away um, and doing the best you can. Sometimes you mightn't get to clean out the paddock or the field as, as well as you want. You have to move them on because they start doing damage and nothing wrong with that as long as the cover is of grass or the cover of grass is low. When it's low, we do less damage. They have more area. The quality of grass is not compromised because you graze um, a larger area. You're getting um, um, faster recovery, more recovery on the farm and because you're grazing lower covers, they, they recover, regrowth fast. If you go into bigger covers of grass, the regrowth is way, way slower because when you graze it out, you know, the bottom of the sward is 
white or yellow. You don't want you doing that. You should stay green, I suppose is the word. Stay green, stay low, um, pick the right animals, get going. Yeah. And really it is flexibility, John. We're starting into the 1st of March now on Friday. Yes. And farmers that start in degrees. What are the targets that they need to hit to avoid having too much grass at the end of the first rotation or in some cases run out and end up having too much grazed? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's balance and it's, it's, it's keep walking, keep looking. Um, we have a saying in this game, you can't make grazing decisions from the yard um, and people won't want to forget that. You have to walk the farm, see what's possible, see where you'll start, what animals go where. So you, you need a plan. Um, broadly, um, for most people, it's reasonably straightforward in that if you can try to have a third of the farm that you want to graze by Patrick's Day, another third by early April, and another third by the middle to the third week of April. For most years, that's not too far off the mark. Um, for farms with high demand, they may decide to graze silage grounds, you know, where they have lots of stock, maybe short of silage, um, have a high stocking rate, um, have a fairly intensive system. On, on, on the other hand, then, if you're like, if you're doing dairy calf to beef, you won't have maybe a, as a big a demand. You mightn't graze the silage ground and just focus on the grazing ground. It does make sense to a catron to try and start grazing on the grazing ground because that's the piece of land that has to, to arrive back with grass on it from the middle of April on. So if you graze the lower covers on that, you cover more area uh, because they're getting more area. Because you're grazing lower covers of grass, they recover faster. They're more responsive to slurry, more responsive to fertilizer, recover quicker. So, you know, you have to keep that in mind. So it's just a matter of getting this kind of um, plan right. But a, a, a third, a third, a third is not bad. A third for Paddy's Day, a third for, if you can, right, a third by the 1st of April. And look, I don't know how either way, whether in March will come. We have to try and get started. Um, and if you don't get the third graze by Patrick's Day, there's still nothing wrong with trying to get 60% of the farm by Easter. So just it's have, a, have a broad plan in your mind. Um, when you come to the end of the grazing of the first rotation, you may have decisions to make. If the paddocks that you graze in early March are going very, very well, you kind of have to start second rotation and maybe um, um, delay the end of the first rotation, if that makes sense. So you might start in the paddocks that are right and then maybe finish off one or two that are left. Uh, sometimes they can be wetter or colder, um, slower to grow. So, you know, it's nothing wrong with finishing the first rotation um, or starting the first rotation, starting the second rotation and not finishing the first on time. If you have too much grass in the farm, there's nothing wrong with topping these up and putting them into the, sil- into the silage area. There's nothing wrong with that. And that can be flexible silage area. It could be cut, sides are cut in early May and make bales out of it. So there's opportunities here. And it's a, it's, it's a case of taking those opportunities uh, with, with having a plan now. Yeah. And you mentioned there the dairy beef system for farmers in relation to having a beef system with yo's lemon at the moment. What advice have you for those? Yeah, so obviously, like, you know, we're coming into early March, the vast majority of, of um, flocks in the country that are lowland uh, will, will will start lambing at that stage. Um, obviously, you'd have prioritised probably those for the home farm, um, given the workload involved. But there's nothing wrong with sending some of the lighter animals out on, to the to the out farms. You know, you can start with a, with a low demand, sp- spread them out over a large area, get going. Just uh, The key here is to get going. You don't have to go all the elements at once. Maybe you have 50 elements in a shed, maybe you take out the 20 lightest. You should always pick the lightest though first, not the heaviest, uh, to go to go grazing. Um, they're the ones that, that need the head start. So that's, you know, it's a case of just getting started, working away with it. If things are improving, you keep going. If things are difficult, you, you, you deal with the flexibility that we outlined earlier about how you manage your pellets and where you go and where you don't go grazing, yeah. Most definitely. And slurry has been spread on most farms. What advice have you for those that will be spreading slurry in the coming weeks? Yeah, well, actually, slurry in March is key for silage ground, right? Um, this is where you want to be. Its timing is right. You know, 3,000 gallons of normal slurry covers the P and K requirements, covers a bit of nitrogen requirements. I admit then we need nitrogen top up and sulfur and sulfur is often forgotten, but the slurry should be really targeted to silage ground now. Um, you know, we've challenges going forward with with um, 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 uh, fertilizer allowances. Um, we have to make better use of the slurry. The slurry gives the best response and fits best in the silage grounds because you're recycling the P and K and fits best on what we call low index ground. Ground 
uh, that has um, low and P and K indexes. Spreading on slurry, you know, near the yard, on grazing ground. We know from soil sampling broadly that the paddocks nearest the farmyard are always good in terms of P's and K's. I know it's convenient for slurry, but from a point of view of, of making best use of it, it, it's not really appropriate. It fits better on silage ground, if at all possible, and it fits best on low index ground. But contractors are now getting, have a lot more uh, variation in their equipment, have a lot more flexibility. There's a lot more that can be done with slurry than compared to times in the past. So it's just a matter of getting this right as best you can now, within reason. That's great, John. And fertiliser will also start to be spread in the coming days. Farmers will start to be looking for recommendations in relation to urea, protected urea, compounds. What would you be recommending this time of year? Yeah, it's a good question, Catherine. Um, the first thing is actually quite simple, is to have the fertiliser in the yard. The weather at this time of year, you know, there's a famous saying there is March is many weathers, right? So, you know, March can come good one day, bad another day. But if you don't have the fertiliser in the yard, this becomes a, a little bit uh, trickier to do. So, uh, you know, things are busy in the spring, weather is variable. You need to have the fertiliser in the yard to start with, right? So for, for where the slurry goes, you know, you won't be needing, if it goes on, on ground, uh, you won't be needing nitrogen fertiliser there because the slurry is taking care of that, right? Um where you haven't spread fertilizer and the ground uh, or haven't spread slurry and where you want to spread fertilizer and the ground is reasonably dry and we're moving in the right direction in terms of air temperature and soil temperature. Yeah, then we can start moving out with, with um, um, a level of um, uh, um, of protected urea, I suppose, is, is, is the choice product, Catherine. Yeah. So um, for those then who can't get slurry to certain grounds, um, it's important to try and get your um, phosphorus out. It's funny the way the whole P and K game works with grassland. P is needed early on in the year. K is needed later on in the year. Um, the P and K is needed for silage ground, especially the K. So that's why slurry fits. So you'd like to have, try where you especially are low index, you'd like to get some of your phosphorus, about half out by early May. So if the weather comes right in March after Patrick's Day, um you take that opportunity. Sometimes it might be April, sometimes it might be later. But the phosphorus is the key one. The phosphorus is needed for early growth of grass. Um, so that's the one that matters. Now, obviously, if you have index three or index four, there's not as much demand at all for phosphorus. But where you have low indexes, the phosphorus is probably more important. But there's lots of choice now on fertilizer. Um, I'd also try and include the sulfur. But like even products like 18612 plus sulfur, they're an old type product, but they are blended right in terms of nitrogen, P, K, and sulfur for grazing. And it's a very simple, common product that can be used to get P and K out, especially the key where slurry is not um, um, available to go to that ground or where the indexes are low. And what are you doing weekly going forward for grass tin, John? Yeah, so Catherine, this is something that uh, Grass 10 and, our, and yourself have talked about. Um, there's more than myself involved in Grass 10. My colleague Joe Dunphy um, is also works on Grass 10. And something we've decided to do for the year is in- introduce kind of what we call weekly grazing management tips every week for um, this podcast. Uh, provide tips through it. They're kind of a two, three minute summary of the things that will um, deal with the grazing management um, of the year ahead, like there's a there's a saying in grass that um, uh, grass changes every week, every month, every season, every year, and be, and the reason for that is because it works around the weather. So therefore, you need you know um, uh, a more uh, flexible but informed approach to dealing with the, the conditions that prevail. At time sometimes they're good. And there's opportunities. Sometimes they're uh, tricky with weather and they're challenging, but you need to get uh, the, the best management in place to, to to deal with that. So that's what Joe will largely focus on, the, the, the grazing management at time. Um, he, he will also try and keep you up to date on the things like, you know, the fertilizer and slurry management for the year. That's becoming more critical now. Um, like when you look at the costs now on farms at this stage, like the big costs are feed, um, fertilizer, um, and, and, and I suppose the contractor on many farms. So getting the most out of grass is going to uh, be key here, especially given our challenges going forward. And getting the most from the nutrients both, uh, brought into the farm, but within the farm gate is also going to be critical. You know, So this is where these pieces start to fit in the jigsaw of grazing, if that makes sense, Catherine. Most definitely. Thanks very much, John. 
So we look forward to that starting from next week forward. That's all for this week's episode. And my thanks to John for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.